We know that boiling is strongly influenced by atmospheric pressure. Pulled down by gravity, the air above us creates pressure, and that makes it difficult for bubbles to form and boiling to take place. We can think of atmospheric pressure as the collisions of air molecules against the surface of the water. That's the pressure. The more collisions, the greater the pressure. But water molecules can create pressure when they leave the liquid. As these faster moving water molecules escape, they collide with the molecules of air. This creates pressure, and we call it vapor pressure. In a way, the water molecules are pushing or colliding against the air molecules. This reduces the amount of pressure felt by the water. Back to boiling. Textbooks often state that when the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure, boiling takes place. This is called the boiling point. Think of it this way. Atmospheric pressure pushes down, and that makes it difficult for the water molecules to spread out and form a bubble. But when the vapor pressure increases, molecules from the liquid escape, and they push against the air molecules and effectively reduce some of the pressure. This makes it easier for the liquid molecules to spread out form a gas, and to rise to the surface. That's boiling. We can make boiling happen by either increasing the vapor pressure or decreasing the atmospheric pressure. Either way, once the vapor pressure and the atmospheric pressure are equal, we've reached the boiling point, and boiling can begin. One last thing. Different substances have different vapor pressures, and therefore they have different boiling points. This has to do with how strongly the molecules are attracted to each other in the liquid. The more strongly they're attracted, the less the vapor pressure, and it's more difficult to boil. Therefore, the higher the boiling point.